There we go, rolled our first time and we're ready. We're off to the nearby town, Nagana today. I think this is the first time in our history of San Blas that there is no wind. <laughs> I think the wind to trade winds are having a few days break, uh, which is nice for a change because it's been howling every day 20 knots. So this is rather pleasant. Can't say that our anchor doesn't dig in properly, can you? Yeah, I think I spoke too soon. It's actually blowing here about 15 knots. The trade winds never disappoint. I really didn't think we we're in for any wind today. This is delightful. We're going shopping today. We are heading to a town called Nargana, uh, which is still a Buddha town, but they have uh, adopted non Buddha tradition. So they have a small supermarket, you can buy diesel there. Apparently, you can have a burger and they sell ice cream. I think it's the only place in the San Blas Islands that you can get ice cream. So maybe we're going to be a bit cheeky and get one or two, followed by burger. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to my Kuna ice cream. Peter made a good point when we were lifting the anchor back there that we need to find our shoes. I haven't seen them in about two months and they've fallen to the bottom of the lazarette, I think. Uh, so that's going to be the first search activity when we drop anchor in town. But that's how we roll. We wear the same clothes and no shoes for weeks. I'm really going to miss sailing in the San Blas when it comes time to leave here. This is a typical sail uh, between islands. We've got six miles to go. The water is absolutely flat. We're behind two layers of reefs back here, uh, just between us and the mountains. And we've got about 13 knots of apparent wind to get us there. We're close hauled at the moment, but hardly healed. So it's just a beautiful sail. We are now approaching an area of the San Blas Islands that we've never visited before. Uh, it's just insane to see how many islands there are on the horizon. In total, there are 350 islands. And I think up to now, we visited maybe 30 of them. So uh, 320 to go. I wonder how many years it's gonna take us. That sounds like hard work to the captain. I think I'll just pick a few highlights and sit back with a cocktail. We are very close to the town now. The first thing which is here to greet us is a washed up sailboat on the shores. <laughs> Never good sign. I wonder what happened there. The prevailing winds are always blowing from the sea, but in the summer season it reverses and it comes from the mountains. So most likely that boat was here in the summer and got blown ashore. Well, it's not Bocas del Toro, let me tell you that. It, it looks a bit like Shantytown. Uh, not quite sure where we're going to anchor and land the dinghy but uh, apparently everyone comes here all the time, so I'm sure there's some facilities that we're gonna find. Wow, it's definitely not something I expected. Uh, it is pretty huge town. I expected little village, but this goes on and on and all of these uh, wooden hats on the waterfront. I wonder what the shopping is gonna be like. This looks nice, looking forward to going ashore. I think the first mate's going to limit his swimming though. There's a few crocs about. That's right, I'm not going in. They would have me as their canapé. All I can think of is that ice cream on that island. I've been promised. Somehow, I don't know where he's got it from. He's told himself that Nagana is all about ice cream. I think he's going to be very disappointed. You know, it's the little things in life that gets me excited. 
not like Mr. Moody over there. It's the little things that get me excited too, like the first mate's disappointment when he doesn't get any ice cream. <laughs> That's gonna make my day. <laughs> See what I mean? This is what I live with. A tyrant. The best things in life are free and usually inflicted by the captain. One part, the other part is fruit and vegetables, and here is price mark. Ah. <laughs> there are some, no? It's not the best stock supermarket I've been to, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> Choosing the ice creams right now. Just a few essentials. I think we're going to avoid Pedro's disappointment after all. There you go. Success, I'm happy. <laughs> a little mini cherry ice cream. That's all I need. <laughs> Defeated by the packaging. <laughs> How disappointing. I'm sure we'll find a way in. <laughs> now, may I point out the size of the ice cream we have bought? Someone's greedy. <laughs> Almost a liter of ice cream. Yeah. They are much younger, their calories are burning faster. <laughs> I'm eating ice cream now, but no destruction free. <laughs> Straight down to business. Good. Well, it was a success. We got our ice cream, but I think it's time for cocktails on Bohemia. On a roll today. Treats all round. Good morning. So that was a very pleasant stop overnight in this town, Nargana. Uh, it wasn't kind of what we expected, but it was a very cool experience. Um, after visiting the town and uh, doing some limited provisioning, uh, we took the dinghy and we went to the estuary of Rio Diablo. And that was really cool. Uh, the jungles, the mangroves, all of the birds. We could hear a lot of monkeys and we were searching for crocodiles. Uh, we went pretty much about four miles inside of the river, but uh, luck wasn't on our side and we actually haven't seen any crocodiles at all, which is okay because I personally, I really don't like crocodiles. He just keeps telling himself there are no crocodiles out here just because we haven't seen them yet. In fact, we have seen one on the island just over there. Uh, yeah, it's a shame we didn't see any yesterday. I love watching them in the river, but uh, you can bet they were watching us. I'm in charge of trimming today. I've had enough of this first mate malarkey. I'm going to take over, you watch. We are super close haul, going at nearly seven knots. Perfect trim, may I say, pat on the back. He better watch out. He better watch out. <laughs> because very soon, I will need him. Luckily, this captain's always on high alert for a hostile takeover. We're only one spoiled happy hour away from a mutiny on Bohemia at all times. He does try, but the captain's job security is not under threat, I don't think. That main's a bit over trimmed, if you ask me. He's putting the brakes on. Tiny little problem, we're healing too much now. <laughs> I may revert to my old position and sit under the dodger. <laughs> At a moment's notice. <laughs> I 
See what happens. I trim the sails and the captain is happy. May I say co-captain is happy. I can feel a demotion coming on already. Today's passage is quite a long one by our current standards in the San Blas. Uh, it's 11 miles, 11 whole nautical miles, if you can imagine that. Uh, we're going to do it in one day rather than split it overnight. And uh, the weather's just perfect for it. Uh, we've got about five miles to go right now. And we've just uh, pipped our head out of the corner of the reef and the sheltered water. So we've got a little bit of swell coming up on our beef. Uh, we're as close haul as we can and that's going to bring us within a stone's throw of our destination uh, but we might have to put in a tack uh, the first mate will be sorry to learn so yeah it's all going well and uh, we're looking forward to being in bug island and hopefully there's going to be no bugs waiting for us on our arrival i'm fishing no luck can you believe i have only caught one fish the entire field you know you can't argue with that definitely overfished. I mean, there is no other explanation. On the Pacific Ocean, I was catching fish every day. And here, absolutely nothing. People stop eating fish so I can catch some. Bless him, Pedro is doing his bit to conserve fish stocks by not catching any. Very sustainable we are. You know, we've been cruising now for four full years and uh, it's terrible how much one forgets. So after our last attempt of heaving two, which turned into a, a semi-disaster, we're gonna do one right now. We've read up the procedure, so we are crystal clear on it. So let's see whether actually it's gonna happen in practice. Crystal clear, exactly what he said. Hopefully no disasters this time. We finally made the effort. Uh, we're already nearly at our destination. It's perfect conditions. We're just going to have a little practice. Uh, we just do a tack, uh, according to the book. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. Uh, so helm hard over, do a tack. We're going to lose our speed as the jib is backwinded. First mate's not going to lift a finger this time, not going to move the sail over. Uh, and then I'm going to put the rudder hard over the other side, which was the trick that I missed last time. Uh, which should lock the boat from tacking uh, again. Okay. I come across the wind. Ready for the jib to get backwinded. There we go. Losing our speed. Then we're going to fully backwind the jib so the boat doesn't go anywhere and rudder hard over the other side. See if it works like it does in the textbooks. And lock the rudder. So when the boat makes some headway, the idea is that the rudder's over the other side. As soon as the water starts flowing past it, we're gonna come back this way into the wind again. I think it worked this time around. We are stationary and everything is calm. Yeah, I think he did it. Still making 1.5 knots, a little bit quick. I think the other thing we can do is adjust the main. If we sheet that in a bit, then it should point us into the wind a bit more. Are we kind of side on right now, which apparently is how most modern production fin keel boats end up. I'm gonna have a play with that next. Yeah, that's the latest agreement. We really need to start practicing these basic uh, maneuvers that we were taught at our courses. Uh, the next one is man overboard. <laughs> that will be fun. I hope he's not intending to have a, a real man overboard, i.e. real first mate overboard. Well, you've got to practice somehow, don't you? Come here. <laughs> Just going to take advantage of the situation. That's right. Just a brief toilet stop. <laughs> That's why we heave to. I've been busy the rest of the time. Captain's time off now. I didn't know that this cruise is going to involve seeing cheap Italian fountains. Good, good. Well done. Obviously, I don't need to practice it because I know it all. Well, overall it worked. The captain's bookworming paid off, uh, but we definitely need to practice that a lot more. And I want to play with the mainsail and see if we can get pointed a bit more into the wind. We were kind of drifting downwind and making almost two knots. 
Uh, so that's not perfect. We should be making under a knot, ideally, really stopping the boat. But I'm really glad we did it and we made the time for it on a passage. We need to do more of that, practicing the basics as we go. We can't have our wine costing more than our diesel. Most of the time, the diesel tastes better. Special thanks in this episode go to all of our patrons for fueling the captain's new cheap second mate fun. Champagne for everyone. But thank you so much, and here's to you. If you've been enjoying our episodes and want to fuel the first mate's bad behavior in the Caribbean, then follow the link on screen to find out more. See you next time.